Hi there, you are going to join me on two trips to two different Goodwills. The first thing that I spotted when we went to the Shillington Goodwill was this DeForest of California hand-painted, most likely to keep your onion keeper. It is missing the lid, but I thought the bottom part would make a cute little planter, so I decided to put that in my cart. And as I checked out the yellow aisle, I saw this deviled egg dish, and usually it would have come with the uh, salt and pepper shaker in the center there, those two oval spaces. I left that on the shelf and looked around to see if there was anything else that I needed to put in my cart. Uh -oh. oh, uh oh, wasn't that, me. That was a frog. That's really sweet. Isn't it cute? There's some... This elephant tart burner was interesting. I like the shape of it, but it was pretty heavy and I decided to leave it on the shelf, but around the corner to that end cap was this desk set not really a desk set because there was just one piece but it was um, made of stone and weighed maybe 400 pounds so i decided <laughs> to leave that there and this was an interesting piece um i think a student had made that i think it said 2016 on the bottom and then they had these really giant seashells i know seashells can sell for good money they were two big ones but i don't really know much about seashells and I haven't really gotten into that thing of selling seashells, so I left those for somebody else. And here are some vintage canisters, but they have the fighting roosters on them, and that's kind of a kind of a sad thing, fighting roosters. So I left that there, and then there were these vintage uh, fruit dishes, fruit bowl dishes. They were unmarked, but you could probably figure out who made them by the design on them. I'm trying to give you a look at the shelves here. This is the blue aisle. And then across from it is the brown aisle. And in the brown aisle, I found this um, Abbey Press vintage sign, Where Words Fail, Music Speaks. I thought that was very nice. Uh, made me think of our music teacher that comes and teaches Jenny Piano. And Diane, you left your mug here on the shelf. It looked like it was a studio art pottery piece, so I took the uh, price tag off very carefully to see who made it. There we go. Clay in Mind, 1978 to 1981. A nice mug, very, very big round handle to it. I thought that was unusual. Here was a nice little ginger jar. I like the look of it and the picture of the flower on it, so I decided to take that. And then this little trinket dish I thought was very sweet. It's not marked, but I would think maybe Japan. It was made in Japan. And I was seeing who made this bowl. It was more of a contemporary piece, but it had a nice design on it. But I did leave that on the shelf. And then I wanted to see what this was. It looked like someone had made this. Had glued some things onto the wood and made their own art. And let's see. Oh, then I found another one of these. So I paired them together. Someone might be more inclined to buy two of them instead of just one. And then I also found another owl and decided to put that with the other owl. <laughs> just working at Goodwill while I'm shopping at Goodwill. <laughs> and here is a jewelry box. It did have a uh, battery in the back, so it's not terribly old. I would guess 90s, 1990s. It had that thing right there. So I didn't try to see if it worked or not. I did move it up out of the way to see what this was underneath here. And it was just some dishes. And then this mug grabbed my attention because Jimmy had just gone to Michigan with his dad. And I thought that was funny. Here was a Michigan mug. These sunglasses were pretty snazzy. Very sparkly and glittery. But I have a giant head, so I knew that they would not fit my head. And then I was going to pick up this uh, pig to bring home. Look at that. Isn't that cool? But unfortunately, in the front, at one time in its life, it had taken a header off a shelf because it had a big old crack in the front of it. Then I saw this hobbyist piece of this wreath, and I thought, wow, this would be really pretty 
with a light underneath it. And then later I saw a viewer of Jocelyn's and mine and she had it in her cart. And I said, oh, good, you got that. And she said, oh, I was here yesterday and I saw the base. I said, oh, did you buy the base? And I don't think she had bought the base or maybe she had, but at least she had the top part and maybe she could find a base another day. And then I was seeing who made these dogs and I felt they were more contemporary. So I left those on the shelf and here was a Jesus figurine that was made in China. And then I almost got this. I think this might have been a daisy and button pattern, but I left that on the shelf. Single toothpick holders don't really sell very well for me, so I left that. That's the reason why I left that. And then I'm just looking through these uh, souvenir plates to see if there was anything interesting. And then this is Pyrex that was uh, killed in the dishwasher, was no longer glossy. What's Jackie, your... Jackie. Hello, baby. Hello. You are so sweet. Hello. It's unusual to see dogs in stores around here in Pennsylvania. Where my mom lives in Oregon, it's very common. People bring their dogs all the time into stores, so it's always very exciting, and my voice gets very high-pitched <laughs> whenever I see a puppy dog in the store. This was hiding behind the frame, so I thought, ooh, this must be worth a lot of money. Someone's hiding this. And it was a very sweet little set, but it did have um, some chipping on the cup, so I did leave that behind. This. And this little bell. I like him. They weren't actually together on the shelf. I don't think, do they go? Yeah. This, oh. Yeah, I know this, this one. I don't know if this one might be okay, but I knew that one. Oh, no, he has a chip on his little knobber. Mm. I'm gonna get this acorn squash <laughs> and put it in my corner. Okay. That's cute. That's sweet. It has a chip though. Okay. Someone keeps missing these. <laughs> this is like my best this day is like ever. The fourth and time then it today. Uncovered this really cool thing. That is neat. But this clip oh, really boho. Here, hold my plate. Okay, I will. <laughs> <laughs> That's really cool. I like that. That's neat. Is it a tray? Oh, it could be. I guess it could be. Oh, I didn't realize there was glass in there. Oh, maybe you there. could, because you. Oh, or you hang it up. Yeah, I think. Yeah. <laughs> I think you. You could use it as a tray. There's oh, it has glass. crunchy things in there. Hmm. Those are just for extra detail. <laughs> to buy all of these beads would have cost me $12 just to buy them. So I left those on the shelf for somebody else. And the last thing I picked up on our trip to Shillington Goodwill was this made in Japan tray. I really like the Christmas poinsettia on it and it was in great shape. Come on, Indy. He's a good girl. Are you coming? Jenny and Jimmy took Indy to go get a bath at the dog store and I went to Goodwill and they were stocking the shelves and they had a whole bunch of art pottery that was signed and very nicely done. And it was a great price before the Goodwill here always kind of makes the art pottery higher. And for some reason they had put lower prices on them and I thought they were very nice pieces. So I loaded up my cart lighten the load for the restocker. <laughs> I thought these were very nice pieces. So you'll get a better look at them at the end of the video when I show my haul. And then these two pieces were one money and I mostly got it for the little creamer. I thought the creamer was nice. I like the color of it. And I was seeing if there was anything else in the cart that I needed. This was a glass thing. You can see what it is. <laughs> You, you know what that is. And there were some stitchery kits, and I love selling stitchery kits. I thought this was very pretty. And it had the extras. It had the needle and the little button that you would need for it. And then I found another one. This was just um, the fabric for cross-stitch. And that can be bought easily at a, craft at a craft store. So I left that in the cart. And then I almost got this. This was very heavy. 
it had some age to it but it was not marked with a, any kind of maker and so i didn't know if this was a made in china piece or it could be worth thousands of dollars and be a rare <laughs> a rare piece i'm kind of veering that it's not worth thousands of dollars and that i made the right choice by leaving it in the cart and then this was interesting but it was very specific um, to that name and year so i left that there and then I noticed another counter cross stitch kit here. I'm going to pull out after I adjust some things, lavender and lace. I have sold these in the past. And this is just the pattern. And so I, I believe I got this one too. You'll have to stay tuned towards the end of the video. I thought this was really cute, but it was very pricey. I think they had it marked at $12 or something really high. So I was just in the store the other day and it was still there. So unfortunately, if they had had a lower price, I think someone would have snatched that up. So here are the shelves. I heard um, the last time I was in that this store is very um, in great need of some employees. They're short staffed, which is probably the, probably the reason why the shelves are so full. But I kind of like it when the shelves are full. I feel sorry for them that they're short staffed because they're the nicest people that work at this Goodwill and it's my favorite one to go to. In another aisle, I found these. They were pop-ups. I would assume for probably a birthday party. And this Halloween bowl I thought was cute. If we were more into fall, I probably would pick that up, but it had a lot of crazing on the bottom, so that made me a little leery. And I found some more art pottery this was a heavier piece. This was probably more of a student piece, I would guess, by the name and there was a number on it. It was very nicely done, but I had enough pottery in my cart, so I left that there. I thought this was sweet, how it said love. And then they had these brown mugs. They had quite a few of those. They were different. Maybe they were a promotion for a coffee, I'm not sure, or for that from that cafe. But there you could see there was quite a few of them. This was made by an artist, but I thought it was kind of on the plain side, so I left that for somebody else. And then I saw that they had some more cross stitch kits. This one was incomplete. And this one too, there was something about it. Maybe when I flip it over, oh, look at that. The the yarn, uh, the thread was all snarled. And I thought, oof, that's going to be a, a problem. So I did look through them, but I, I did end up just keeping the ones I got earlier and left those for somebody else. This fabric is called Canton Gardens, and it's uh, Colonial Williamsburg Foundation Reproduction Fabric. And looking again on the brown section, this one is my favorite aisle because you never know what you can find. I don't know why the camera suddenly, suddenly the sun came out <laughs> in the middle of the brown aisle. You always have to look in the bags because you never know what's in there. And this, I think, was upholstery fabric. It was very, very heavy. Um, the weight made me nervous because that would set, um, you know, people wouldn't want to pay for the shipping if something's very, very heavy. And this was very, very heavy because of what kind of fabric it was. But it was a great deal if you needed to reupholster some furniture. And then in the back here were some um, books in Russian of places to visit. There was a whole bunch of them and I thought it was interesting how they had bundled them together. These were just postcards, but it was interesting how they had bundled these books together in bags. So here, like they're tourist books. I thought that was interesting. So I kind of pulled them out from the hiding place and put them where someone could see them, history buff or someone who likes to travel. I think would like that. This next piece grabbed my attention because of the color on the lid. I thought that was really pretty and I thought it was gonna be a steamer for dumplings. But look, it's styrofoam. It's to keep your things cold and it weighs like nothing and it's in great shape. And I thought that was very clever. So I decided to get that. And then there was this wood piece on the bottom here and it has some Asian characters caricatures you know caric symbols <laughs> it has 
symbols on it. But I left that there on the shelf because it was kind of a big piece. And then I was seeing what this paper was, but it was just a print and it was in pretty bad condition. So I left that on the shelf. I almost thought it was a um, book cover at first. Here is a Sandra Boynton mug. Chocolate does uh, make the world go round. Who can say no to chocolate? Unless you don't like chocolate, then you easily can say no to chocolate. <laughs> Let's see. I think that's the Blue Isle. Now we're doing another round before we leave because you never know what you'll find. The first round, I'm always usually excited, and then I miss things, and then I go back and, and look again. So I've seen who the maker was on this big bowl, but a little bit too big for me to ship. If things are oversized, then the, the shipping prices go up. So I do like to keep things in the largest box at 12, 12, 12, or 12, 16, 8. For those of you who are starting out and uh, are worried about shipping, if you keep your box size within that parameter, you'll be okay. Here were some salt and pepper shakers. I thought they had a nice design to them, but I left those there. And I thought this design was very nice. It reminded me of restaurant wear, and I wanted to see if it was restaurant wear. I don't believe it was. I could be wrong. And then this was a ginormous bowl. So I wanted to show you, look how ginormous this bowl was. And it was made in China. That's a big statement piece. And then I found some more art pottery, and I was looking at this. And I felt that said Tony on it. I felt that was more of a student piece. And again, because I had the other pieces, I decided to leave that on the shelf and it had a little chip there on the side. And then I like picking up tin. So I seen what this tin was. And then I decided to check out the art. And there are these ginormous, it looked like oil paintings or acrylic paintings. And these were originally sold at JCPenney's. Because they had the J.C. Penney's sticker. They were made in China. But they had the J.C. Penney's and the Goodwill stickers on them. And they were originally sold at J.C. Penney's for $25. And you could have both of them. So I thought, those are some statement pieces. And then behind it was some original artwork. But then I decided to get this really, really cool print. This foil print. Look at that. Doesn't it look like she's unrolling candy? I just think it's great. I don't think the frame really reflects well. For the picture, I think it would look cute in a really bright frame, but I thought that was too sweet, so I decided to take that with me. And then I thought this was a neat piece, probably a snack tray, you know, your vegetable tray. And Armstrong, is. we have an Armstrong in um, Lancaster, so that was probably someone who used to work for Armstrong. Their collector's plate, and they had a whole bunch of these mugs. And it, I think it said Threshold. And if I'm not mistaken, I think that is a Target brand. And they had these um, window decorative things for your curtains on top of this china. So I removed it so they wouldn't break these. And these are little luncheon plates, which I think are so cute. And I really like these. But there were, And there was a whole stack of them. So I brought them out onto the floor so you could see how cute they were. You could see you and your friends sitting around having little snacks with those trays. I thought they were sweet. And I thought this was a nice piece. It was very heavy. I think it might've been for a candle. Someone had hand painted that, but that was nicely done. I was trying to find a spot for it. So I moved some things out of the way and put it there. I always save the white aisle for last. Then Jenny knows when we're getting ready to leave. <laughs> And then they had some prints on the shelf here. So I was looking through them and seeing if there was anything that I liked or I thought somebody else might like. But I ended up um, leaving those all there. But that's what they look like. I have been picking up a little bit more art prints lately. And that finishes up our trip here to Goodwill. Just a friendly reminder that there's about nine days left, probably eight days left by the time you see this video to purchase some merch. It is through Bonfire. It is a limited time campaign. I always, me and Jimmy always get so excited when we see someone has purchased a shirt or a sweatshirt or a tank top. The link for Bonfire is in the description below. 
Also, I thought you would like to see some pictures of some birds. The birds have been very active in our backyard, and so here are some photos that I took the other day. And coming up next is everything I purchased. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and leave a comment and maybe hit the thumbs up if you really enjoyed this video. If you haven't already subscribed, I'd appreciate it if you'd consider subscribing to my channel. And of course, with the warmer weather upon us, we are super excited about bringing you along on more outdoor adventures and of course, some thrifting expeditions as well. I hope you're having a great day and I'll see ya. You do. You need to go girl. You need to go girl. Me too.